All right, so we will get back into CBDB. I've loaded it up here in the simulator in Visual Studio. I've created an account. I've logged in. I'm in. I'm inside the app. Uh, so you've got your version, which uh, that was that mini assessment on Tuesday where you added your fonts and colors. You can grab a copy of mine if you want, but then you'll have to change your colors also. Um, so I've logged into it, and I've got the home screen and the save comic and view comic. So it's time to start working on save comic screen, view comic screen. So the first thing we need to do in, um, in our project in save comic is we need to start to create a way for user input. Remember the big idea here is that the user is going to save their inventory, in this case comic book collection. So we need various fields that we will accept for them to type in name of the comic, year of the comic, etc. So we'll need some fields right here. Let's go to our HTML, index HTML file in Visual Studio. We will create some input fields. We've had input fields so far in our project for the login and sign up systems, right? So in Visual Studio, open index.html. And let's go find our PG Save Comic screen. Remember, you can control F to find it quickly. PG Save Comic. It's at approximately line 148. We have a section PG Save Comic. So we're going to create an input form in the main article. I've currently got some H2 text, line 162, save comic, and then a paragraph there, in my case with nothing. Uh, I'm going to remove that paragraph. So we have, we have the article, the main interface, the main content area, that is, of this screen, and a heading. I'm going to create a form. form tag. You can comment here. Form for user to input the comic book fields. Or not fields, uh, comic book data. The name of the comic, the number of the comic, the year, etc. Whatever we're going to do. We're also going to do um, eventually we're going to have uh, we're going to be able to take a photo of the comic that'll be stored as well we're going to scan the barcode of the comic and save that data so the data regarding a comic book this form we want to give it a unique identifier attribute so that we can then use the JavaScript to know that when this form is submitted let's retrieve the data from the form process it store it in the database We'll call this, um, just to be consistent here, what are we calling our forms? FM or F-O-R-M? Form sign up. Okay, we're using the long word for it. Okay, so we'll call this ID equals form save comic. Any unique identifier to differentiate this form from the other three that we already have in the project. So we're going to save the um, title of the comic, the number of the comic, its year, We'll do publisher, which company published it. And any notes we want to save about the comic, like first appearance of Spider-Man, uh, or last issue of this series. So 
some amount of notes. Eventually we will do photo and barcode, but um, there are going to be, starting off at least here, five fields that will be related to this, to each entry for the comic book. So eventually when we get to it, those are the five fields that we saw on the left side of the colon in the JSON data. On the right side of the colon will be the title of the comic, the number, the year, etc. Now, I want to have some of these fields required and some of them optional. Which do you think are the most important that a person must type in to identify a comic? Title, yep. Anything else? Number, yeah. There's more than one Superman number one. There's more than one Spider-Man number one. So perhaps also identifying them by the year. Superman number one, 1940. Superman number one, 1986. Superman number one, 2014. There's different years that Superman has come out. So we're going to differentiate the required and the optional fields. So we're going to separate the required ones, title, number, and year, we're going to separate them with a field set. So wrap a field set tag around title, number, and year, and another one around publisher and notes. Field set is data grouped together visually and conceptually in a form. A field set then has a legend. This is text that appears on screen that will say this is option this is required, this is optional. So they both then need legend tag. So the legend is the text that appears on screen that identifies why is this grouped together. Because this is required. The following data in this field set is required. The following data in this field set is optional. Okay, so I put, I put here just the raw text that will appear on screen. It's not valid HTML yet. Uh, there's going to be a title input box, a number input box, a year input box. This text is going to be, these, these little bits of text are going to be labels that we will display on screen. So I wrote them... I wrote first the the text that's going to be displayed on screen, but what we want to do is make sure that labels, we wrap labels around them. Same thing for publisher and notes. So labels, label tag wraps around title, number, and year. The, the action uh, attribute uh, would be necessary for if we were, for example, processing this form off of a server mm -hmm. and we want to uh, process this form via a separate PHP file or a CGI file, uh, we're not going to process it with any uh, separate um, sort of server scripting. We're going to process it with our own uh, JavaScript uh, JavaScript commands. 
so uh, we're not adding that because we're not processing it off of a server. Uh, that is also related to the server because we have the method, I believe, of like get and put. It's more commands about how are we interacting with the uh, with the scripting language on the server. Which again, we're not running this off of a server, so we're fine that we don't have the the action or the method because we're, we're not running it off of a server. Traditionally, a form because it was HTML was on a server. We would process it via some sort of server scripting. We're not having it on a server, so we don't need method and um, action. These labels have attributes of four that they will be attached to input fields. Uh, in title four, in number. These labels are going to be used for input fields with these particular names. Labels, of course, at the moment are just the text that appears. We'll do the input fields in a moment, but each of these labels are being used for an input field. And then publisher and notes. And publisher. And in notes. For readability, I'm going to drop down to the next line below each one of these so that I can create my input fields. This input field is of type text. What the person can type into this input field is text, the text of the name of the comic. It will accept numbers as well, so if there's a comic called you know, 100 superheroes. It'll take that. It'll take numbers as well, and letters. Or if the number is simply called, um, I think there's a comic called 1602. Uh, it'll take that as well. Even though this says text, it will take numbers as well. So the type of data that this input field will accept is, is text. Uh, it's a good idea to put placeholder text in most input fields to guide people or remind them um, what they can type into these boxes. We, of course, as we design our projects and our apps, we know exactly how these things work. And you'll be surprised when you beta test this stuff and people don't get it. But in my mind, it was so, it was so obvious what they should have typed. So here we're just typing, you know, Batman. I expect the person there to type the name of the comic. So here is the name of a comic. placeholder text. I want to mark that this is required. So simply the required attribute all by itself. It doesn't need any it doesn't need any equals anything. This is now saying a person must type in the name of the comic into this input field required. We then need a name and an ID which will be exactly the same as the label in title and then ID in title so these should be exactly the same as the label so now we've linked the label with its corresponding input field We'll need something similar for the number in an input field, this time though of type number. The only thing that should be typed into and the only thing that will be accepted into this input field is numbers. If they try typing letters, it'll, it'll reject it. It won't even let them type letters. 
So this is pretty cool. This is a way for it to uh, know exactly what kind of data is in it and only accept certain data. Uh, you could also put a placeholder here, number one. So it's expected that you type a number here uh, or anything here, you know, Batman number 16, whatever. So any sort of number as a placeholder that will tell users what should be typed into there. This one's required. So we give the required attribute. The way to identify comics, you know, comics have been around over a hundred years in their current form. And some of these most classic superheroes, Batman, Superman, have been around 80 years. So throughout those 80 years, there have been several versions of uh, Batman number one, number 12, whatever. So we need to identify them next also by the year. But first, this needs a name exactly the same as the for attribute. Yes? What about the value? Value, um, in our case, placeholder is better and it's it's perhaps a bit more recommended because placeholder is text that appears there momentarily when they click onto it and type their own value it goes away if you had set if we had set this to value the value is there and they have to manually remove it so unless they change the value what we typed in there was what will be saved so placeholder is the modern and smart way for it to fill itself in and then delete itself automatically <clears throat> And next we've got year, which is going to be very similar to number, which in this case may be a little copy and paste to save yourself some effort, because it's also an input field of type number. I expect a number to be typed for the year. Placeholder, number 16, that would probably be 1940. Um, we're going to, of course, make sure you change your name and ID to reflect in year. But it's a place, it needs a placeholder, it needs a required attribute, it needs a name and ID attribute. I just copied and pasted. Just make sure you change those IDs and names. Okay, publisher and notes in the optional in the optional um, field set are going to be something similar. Those are going, uh, publisher is, is going to be another input field of type text, but notes will be a little bit different because in here we want to give the person the ability to type as much notes as they want. An input field of type text will have one line of text where they can type, but for notes usually you want two or three lines of what, of what they can type. So let's do publisher here. Input of type text, placeholder, DC Comics, no required attribute. So we simply omit it. I don't, I don't need them to type the name of the company. You can make it required if you want. But those three things at the top are at least what I want as required data, so no required attribute. And then what it needs is the, uh, the name and the, and the ID, so same as the for label in publisher, ID in publisher.
Okay, uh, notes is going to be a little bit different. This is a text area, which has a pair. Input fields don't have a pair. I've got the self-closing tag there, and whenever we talked about self-closing tags, remember, I didn't mention it today, but uh, it's perfectly valid to not have the slash or to have the slash. Uh, I'm letting... Uh, I'm letting Visual Studio close it with a slash for me uh, just to save some time, so I'm leaving it as as, as is. But um, the previous forms, we, we didn't have a closing slash, but it's fine. Text area has a, has a, is a tag that has a pair. Uh, it's a special one here. But this one still also has attributes and such. So um, here, same thing. Uh, this can have placeholder text as well. So we don't have a type attribute, its type is text area. So when they were inventing this, uh, no one had the great idea to make it consistent. This one's just different. Text area doesn't have a type, but it can have a placeholder. First appearance of, I don't know, um, Mr. Freeze. So this is going to be some text that can appear here, placeholder. name and ID as before and this is being added into the first tag the first tag of text area not in the second one the second one is just called by itself with a slash these attributes are being added to the first text area tag so ID in notes We're going to eventually scan a barcode and take a photo. Those will be optional as well, so they will remain in this field set area. But I don't want to cover that just yet, so we'll make a note here to say to do, add the barcode and photo fields eventually. We have enough data we can start to save already. We'll come back to do the barcode and, and photo fields eventually. Okay, so most of us, even with you know, 20 years experience in HTML, most of us can't process that in our minds and visually see what it looks like. Is that form complete? Submit. We need a submit button and perhaps a clear button. I want to start over. Whoops, I mistyped it. I want to start over. So we're going to need a, a submit button and a clear button. Now, uh, one of the things that we can use here uh, in um, jQuery Mobile, I'm going to make a note here, using the jQuery Mobile grid system, we place our buttons side by side. The default is that a button will take up its own, its own space. It's going to be a block level element. So you're going to have a button that would say clear and a, and a button that says submit, one on top of the other. I want them side by side. So we have jQuery as a way for us to make grids, to divide up uh, horizontally and vertically our screen. So uh, I want to do that here. I want to make a row with two columns, put one button on the left, one button on the right. So uh, we haven't done grids before with jQuery Mobile. It's pretty straightforward, and it requires a div. A div is a generic container. And we've got a div and another div. So this is about to create a grid. This is going to be the first. This is going to be the first um, cell, the second cell. It's not quite a table. It's a grid, but then it needs the appropriate data roles. I remember jQuery Mobile uses data roles to sort of upgrade plain old HTML into something more modern. Now the catch though, it's not a data role, it's a class, but it functions the same way. UI-grid-a. So grid A is a grid that has one row. 
So this is one cell in one row. This is another cell in the same row. So both of these are going to be in the same row, grid A. If we, have, if we had done grid B, this would create two rows. And then we'd have to add more cells. And then if we wanted, you know, uh, three rows, C, and, and so forth. But we want one row, two columns, first column, first cell, second column, second cell. We need to further upgrade the plain old div here than to say class quotes UI block A, the first cell of this row, another class UI block B, the second cell in this row. So this creates one row here, first column, second column. So in the div, don't type this yet, but this is going to be clear and this is going to be submit. So don't, don't type this, but to visualize it, there's going to be a button on the left, a button on the right, clear, submit, or backwards for you, right, left and right, um, clear, submit, and it's going to be in a row, first column, second column. Okay, so these buttons are going to be the standard buttons for uh, resetting or submitting a form. So we'll have an input field of type reset. This creates a reset button with a value. Value is the text that appears on screen. We'll say clear, clear the form. We can attach an icon here. It was a long time ago, but how do we add icons with jQuery Mobile? Data dash icon and then some icon, yes. So data dash icon. And I think a good one here, we've got an icon called delete. So this will be like a little cancel icon. So buttons in forms can also be input fields, but then the type is of reset, so it'll be a button that'll reset. We added a value, which is the text that appears on the button, clear, with an icon, data dash icon, delete. For the submit button, it's going to be something very similar. We're going to have an input field this time of type submit, the value, the text that will appear on screen will be, I guess we'll just say save, we'll save the comic, and an icon, data icon, uh, there's one called check, it's like a little check mark, that makes sense that I would save it. I don't think we have like the classic save icon like the floppy disk. Right, we see the floppy disk all the time as the save icon. I don't believe we've got that one built into jQuery Mobile, this version of it, but check mark close enough. So this is creating a grid of two columns with one button saying delete, I mean clear, the other button saying save. So now we've got a clear and save button clear and submit, cancel and submit buttons of our form. While we're here, we will also set ourselves up to uh, have a pop-up happen. When we save the comic, I want a pop-up that says, you saved the comic. Remember when we did this, when we created a user account. After saving, after creating an account, there was a pop-up that says, you know, account saved. Or when we tried to log in and it said, account doesn't exist. Remember, we made those pop-ups. So we will do the same thing here. In this particular in this particular screen after the form but before the end of the article we're going to create a pop-up so giving ourselves the note jQuery mobile pop-up to display via JavaScript when comic is saved The 
is going to be a div we're going to have the message comic saved when they fill in the fields especially the required ones and they click save a pop-up will appear saying comic saved we don't actually have to program a fill in all fields please because of using required up here the browser the device will automatically give us a please fill in these fields so we don't even have to program that to complete this div though it needs a data role of pop-up a class of UI-content so it's not transparent and then ID so that we know to uh, load it via JavaScript which we'll call pop comic saved maybe be careful here I know this happens every year that I teach this every semester plurals pop comics saved pop comic saved I've already seen it several times this semester as well no big deal to fix, of course, but just remember your plurals or singulars as you create these IDs. So we're creating this input, uh, we're creating this form so that we can start to save comics. And we've talked about forms before. This, this is nothing really new, it's just the way of how we're starting to design it. So if you want to then take it, check a look at it in your browser or device in the Save Comics screen, we should have then Save Comic, this is required, here's our boxes, title of the comic, number, year, optionals, clear and save buttons. So at the moment if you try to save anything it won't work. It's not going to work yet. But if I try to save without typing anything, I get the pop-ups. Please fill this in. Okay, well, I'll type something in try to save it. Again, all of the ones that we set to required will automatically tell us something needs to be typed in. And the ones that are not required won't, won't ask us. If I click save right now, it won't work. It'll refresh everything to take me back to my login. That's normal. We expect that. And if you're curious and you look in the developer's console, you get some scary errors. That's fine. We're not there yet. But at the very least, I want it to appear like we're starting to get this to work. And then we can type stuff in the publisher, we can stop, type stuff in the notes, we can clear it all to start over. You see the text that appears, placeholder text. If I try to type words in the year, it should not let you because we have type of number. But technically I can type in a number here. Yeah, that was a comic published in the year 1111, sure. We need to have it confirm plausible values later, but at the least, very least here it does let us type in the types of data. And like I said, you can, there is a comic called 1602, um, probably from like 2007 from Marvel, and so it will let us uh, take uh, numeric values there, even though that was text. This is as far as we are at at the moment. We'll take our first break. You want to confirm that your input fields are working here, and then we'll go on in, in a moment. At 7.02, we'll take a break until 7.12. Question? Be there one moment. So we'll take a break until 7.12, make sure it looks something like this, and then we'll proceed.